There are no front lines in this war. The boundaries are blurred and they're constantly shifting. And these officers know driving around in an armored vehicle like this, well, they expect to be shot at. They're moving targets. In recent times, this Caribbean nation has become a hotbed of chaos and terror, with gangs launching a violent assault on the presidential palace in the capital city of Port-au-Prince. As the violence grips the nation, a viral new footage has surfaced, showing the levels of depravity and human rights violations that the citizens of Haiti face amidst the chaos. Violence and cannibalism in Haiti. It all began in the early months of 2024, when tensions within the country started to rise. In January, protests erupted across Haiti as citizens voiced their frustrations over the economic crisis, political corruption, and widespread poverty plaguing the nation. These demonstrations quickly turned violent, with clashes between protesters and security forces becoming increasingly frequent. By February, the situation had reached a boiling point. Gangs, fueled by the chaos and instability, began to seize control of various neighborhoods in Porto Prince, engaging in fierce battles with the police. The streets became battlegrounds, with innocent civilians caught in the crossfire. As the violence intensified, the government declared a state of emergency in an attempt to regain control. However, this only seemed to further provoke the gangs, who saw it as a challenge to their authority. They launched a coordinated assault on multiple government buildings, including the presidential palace, leaving a trail of destruction in their wake. In a shocking turn of events, the gangs also targeted prisons, freeing thousands of dangerous criminals. This this mass prison break only added to the chaos as these criminals joined forces with the already powerful and ruthless gangs, further destabilizing the country. One of the key figures behind this wave of violence is Jimmy Barbecue Cherizier, a notorious gang kingpin. He has openly declared his intention to force the acting Prime Minister, Ariel Henry, to step down. Jimmy Cherizier has warned of dire consequences, including civil war and genocide, if his demands are not met. The international community has been closely monitoring the situation, with the United States and Germany withdrawing their staff from Haiti due to the escalating violence. Foreigners in the country, including American and Canadian citizens, find themselves stranded and desperate to leave as both international airports remain closed. The country just deteriorated really, really quickly. The, the real fear is that if the police force collapses in Haiti, you become very vulnerable as a hostage, quite frankly. The acting prime minister, who was out of the country when the violence erupted, is now stuck in Puerto Rico, unable to return to Haiti. The United States has been in communication with him, urging him to find a compromise compromise that will bring an end to the political stalemate and restore peace to the nation. The emergence of a viral video that has shocked the world. In this video, which has spread like wildfire across social media platforms, an alleged gang member can be seen engaging in the unthinkable act of cannibalism, consuming human body parts. The graphic nature of the video has sent shockwaves throughout the global community, leaving viewers horrified and questioning the depths of depravity that can exist within society. The footage, although disturbing, has garnered immense attention, with millions of views and shares within a matter of hours. As news of the video spread, social media platforms were flooded with reactions ranging from disbelief to outrage. People from all corners of the globe expressed their shock and horror, unable to comprehend the brutality captured on screen. Hashtags related to Haiti and the video quickly trended as individuals sought to raise awareness and demand justice for the victims. The international media also picked up on the story, with news outlets around the world reporting on the shocking video. Headlines screamed of the unimaginable acts of violence and cannibalism in Haiti, capturing the attention of audiences everywhere. The video became the focal point of discussions, sparking debates on the root causes of such extreme violence and the urgent need for intervention. Human rights organizations and governments condemned the acts depicted in the video, calling for immediate action to address the escalating violence in Haiti. The United Nations expressed deep concern over the situation, urging the Haitian government to take decisive measures to protect its citizens and restore law and order. However, amidst the global outrage, there were also skeptics who questioned the authenticity of the video. Some argued that it could be staged or manipulated footage designed to further fuel the chaos and tarnish the reputation of Haiti. These doubts only added to the complexity of the situation, leaving many unsure of what to believe. In response to the video, the Haitian government launched an investigation to determine its authenticity and identify those involved. The authorities faced immense pressure to bring the perpetrators to justice and restore a 
sense of security to the country. However, the challenges were immense, given the widespread violence and the power wielded by the gangs. The impact of the video on the people of Haiti cannot be overstated. It has further shattered their sense of safety and exposed the depths of brutality that some are capable of. Many are living in fear, uncertain of what the future holds, and desperate for an end to the violence that has plagued their lives. The Haitian Crisis in the dark era of the 20th century, Haiti was under the iron fist of Jean-Claude Duvalier, a dictator known as Baby Doc. His rule was marked by corruption, human rights abuses, and economic mismanagement that plunged the nation into a state of despair. During Duvalier's reign, which began in 1971, Haiti experienced unimaginable horrors. The Regimi's secret police, known as the Tonton Makutis, terrorized the population, carrying out brutal acts of violence and intimidation. Dissent was swiftly crushed, and anyone suspected of opposing the regime was subjected to torture, imprisonment, or even death. The impact of Duvalier's rule was devastating. The economy crumbled under his mismanagement, with widespread poverty and unemployment becoming the norm. The majority of the population lived in squalid conditions, struggling to survive while the ruling elite amassed vast wealth. But it wasn't just the economic and political oppression that plagued Haiti during this time. Duvalier's regime was also notorious for its corruption. The dictator and his cronies siphoned off millions of dollars from the country's coffers, leaving little for public services or infrastructure development. Schools and hospitals were neglected, and basic necessities such as clean water and electricity were scarce. The international community turned a blind eye to the suffering of the Haitian people, as Duvalier maintained a semblance of stability in the region. However, behind the facade of order, the country was crumbling. The shocking truth of the regime's brutality and corruption was hidden from the world, but the Haitian people refused to be silenced. In the late 1980s, a wave of protests and uprisings began to sweep across across the country. The people had had enough of Duvalier's oppressive rule and were determined to fight for their freedom. In 1986, the Haitian Revolution erupted as thousands took to the streets demanding an end to the dictatorship. The movement gained momentum and the pressure became too much for Duvalier to bear. Fearing for his life, he fled the country, leaving behind a legacy of destruction and despair. Amidst the chaos and uncertainty following the fall of Jean-Claude Duvalier, a glimmer of hope emerged in the form of Jean-Bertrand Aristide, a charismatic and populist leader. Aristide captured the hearts of the Haitian people with his promises of social justice and equality. In 1990, Aristide was elected as Haiti's first democratically elected president. It was a moment of triumph for the nation, as the people believed that a new era of prosperity and stability was on the horizon. Aristide's presidency was marked by a focus on grassroots movements and empowering the marginalized communities that had long been neglected. However, his time in office was short-lived. Just seven months into his presidency, Aristide was overthrown in a military coup led by General Raoul Cedras. The coup plunged Haiti back into a state of chaos and violence as rival factions vied for control of the country. The impact of the coup was devastating. The progress made under Aristide's leadership was swiftly undone as human rights abuses and political repression became the norm once again. The military regime cracked down on dissent, silencing any opposition through intimidation and violence. The international community, recognizing the illegitimacy of the coup, imposed economic sanctions on Haiti in an attempt to pressure the military regime to step down. However, the sanctions had unintended consequences, further exacerbating the suffering of the Haitian people. The economy collapsed and poverty levels soared. The Haitian people, however, refused to be silenced. Despite the risks, they took to the streets in protest, demanding the return of their democratically elected president. The resistance movement grew in strength, with ordinary citizens joining forces to fight against the oppressive regime. In 1994, the international community, led by the United States, intervened to restore Aristide to power. Operation Uphold. Democracy was launched with the aim of ousting the military regime and reinstating the rightful president. The intervention brought a temporary sense of stability to Haiti as Aristide returned to the presidency. But the underlying issues that had plagued Haiti for decades remained unresolved. Poverty, corruption, and political unrest continued to hinder the nation's progress. The international aid that poured into the country in the aftermath of the intervention was marred by allegations of mismanagement and corruption, with much of the assistance failing to reach those in need. The Haitian people People, once again, found themselves caught in a cycle of hope and disappointment. The promises of a brighter future seemed elusive, as the challenges facing the nation proved to be deeply rooted and complex. On January 12, 2010, a magnitude 7.0 earthquake struck the impoverished nation, leaving a trail of destruction and despair in its wake. The impact of the earthquake was unimaginable. The epicenter of the quake was just 16 miles west of the capital city, Port-au-Prince, where the majority of the population resided. Buildings crumbled like sandcastles 
walls, reducing homes, schools, and hospitals to rubble. The death toll was staggering, with estimates ranging from 230,000 to 300,000 lives lost. The scenes of destruction were heart-wrenching. Families were torn apart as loved ones were trapped beneath the debris. The injured lay in the streets, desperate for medical attention that was in short supply. The cries for help echoed through the shattered city as the world watched in horror. The earthquake exposed the fragility of Haiti's infrastructure and the government's inability to respond effectively to such a disaster. The lack of emergency preparedness and the absence of a coordinated response exacerbated the suffering of the Haitian people. Aid organizations and governments from around the world rushed to provide assistance, but the scale of the disaster overwhelmed their efforts. The recovery efforts were marred by allegations of corruption and mismanagement. The billions of dollars in international aid that poured into the country seemed to vanish into thin air, with little tangible progress to show for it. The Haitian people, already burdened by poverty and political instability, were left to fend for themselves amidst the rubble. The aftermath of the earthquake was a harsh reality for the survivors. Makeshift camps sprouted up across the city, housing thousands of displaced individuals. These camps became breeding grounds for disease as sanitation and access to clean water were scarce. Cholera, a preventable and treatable disease, spread rapidly, claiming the lives of thousands. The resilience of the Haitian people shone through in the face of such adversity. Communities banded together, supporting one another in their darkest hours. Volunteers from around the world flocked to Haiti, offering their skills and resources to aid in the recovery efforts. The spirit of solidarity and compassion was a beacon of hope amidst the ruins. However, the road to recovery was long and arduous. The challenges facing Haiti seemed insurmountable. The need for sustainable infrastructure, access to healthcare, and economic stability loomed large. The international community pledged its support, promising to help Haiti rebuild and emerge stronger from the ashes. As the years went by, the Haitian state began to crumble under the weight of corruption and mismanagement. The government, plagued by scandals and a lack of accountability, failed to address the needs of its people. The country became a breeding ground for armed groups, paramilitary forces, and former police officers who posed as community leaders. These groups, fueled by political alliances and personal agendas, resorted to violence and intimidation to further their own interests. The crisis took a turn for the worse in 2021 with the assassination of President Jovenel Moise. This shocking event created a power vacuum, leaving a void in the leadership of the country. In the absence of a legitimate government, Ariel Henry, who was the Prime Minister under Moise, assumed power with the support of several nations, including the United States. However, his legitimacy has been questioned by many Haitians, who view him as part of the same corrupt system that has plagued the nation for years. The failure to hold elections, which were repeatedly postponed due to logistical problems and violence, further fueled the flames of discontent. Armed groups, already active in Port-au-Prince, seized the opportunity to escalate the violence, taking control of at least 80% of the capital. The Uppsala Conflict Data Program estimates that more than 8,400 people were killed, injured, or kidnapped in 2023 alone, marking a staggering 122% increase from the previous year. The situation in Haiti has deteriorated rapidly, with armed groups attacking vital infrastructure such as airports, police stations, seaports, and even the central bank. The recent raid on the country's two main prisons led to the escape of approximately 4,000 prisoners, further destabilizing an already beleaguered government. The people of Haiti have been caught in the crossfire, with thousands being displaced and forced to flee their homes in search of safety. Amidst this chaos, the international community has struggled to find a solution. Foreign intervention, including military interventions and support for unpopular leaders, has been met with resistance from Haitians who believe that such interventions have only brought death and destruction. Calls for Haitian-led solutions have grown louder, with advocates, scholars, church leaders, women's rights groups, and local organizations proposing their own solutions to the crisis. The impact of this violence on the population cannot be overstated. Families are torn apart, lives are shattered, and the sense of security that once existed has been shattered. The fear of armed groups looms large, forcing many Haitians to live in constant fear and uncertainty. Safe places are few and far between, with even public spaces like the boxing arena in Port-au-Prince no longer offering respite from the violence. Deep poverty and famine further exacerbate the suffering of the Haitian people. Gangs have cut off access to the country's largest port, Autorité Portuaire Nationale, severely limiting the flow of essential goods, including food. As a result, food scarcity looms large, pushing many Haitians to the brink of starvation. The already vulnerable population, including children and the elderly, are particularly at risk. The dire situation in Haiti is further compounded by the ongoing political instability. With no elected government officials in office, the country is left in a state of limbo. Ariel Henry has faced mounting pressure to resign, with protests erupting across
across the nation. The idea of a transitional government brokered by outsiders rather than Haitians themselves has been met with resistance from both humanitarian workers and residents who believe that Haitian-led solutions are the key to resolving the crisis. Haitian-led solutions to address the deep-rooted issues that have plagued the nation for years. Advocates, scholars, church leaders, women's rights groups, lawyers, humanitarian workers, and local organizations have come together to propose a potential pathways to resolution. One notable initiative is the Commission to Search for a Haitian Solution to the Crisis, formed in 2021. This commission, composed of both Haitian and non-Haitian stakeholders, has put forward the Montana Accord. This accord outlines a two-year interim government with oversight committees tasked with restoring order, eradicating corruption, and establishing fair elections. The proposal aims to address the immediate needs of the country while paving the way for long-term stability and democratic governance. The Montana Accord emphasizes the importance of Haitian leadership in charting the nation's future. It recognizes that foreign intervention, including from the United States, has often resulted in unintended consequences and has failed to address the underlying issues facing Haiti. Haitians themselves are best positioned to understand the complexities of their society and to develop sustainable solutions that reflect their aspirations and needs. However, the creation of a transitional government is not without its challenges. Years of democratic disruption and a crumbling political leadership have left Haiti without a functioning electoral system. The country has not held an election in eight years, further eroding trust in the political process. Rebuilding the democratic institutions and restoring faith in the electoral system will be crucial steps towards stability. Critics argue that foreign intervention, particularly from the United States, has contributed to the dismantling of the Haitian state. The history of military interventions and support for unpopular leaders has left a legacy of death and destruction. Haitians and their supporters advocate for a shift away from military interventions and towards investments in education, healthcare, and infrastructure. They believe that empowering Haitians to lead their own development is the key to long-term success. The international community also has a role to play in supporting Haiti's recovery. Instead of military interventions, there is a growing call for increased humanitarian aid, targeted investments, and partnerships that prioritize the needs and aspirations of the Haitian people. This includes addressing the root causes of poverty, promoting sustainable economic development, and fostering social cohesion. It is important to recognize that the road to resolution will not be easy. The challenges facing Haiti are complex and deeply entrenched. Rebuilding trust, addressing corruption, and fostering national unity will require sustained efforts from all stakeholders. The voices of the Haitian people must be heard and their agency respected in shaping the future of their nation. Foreign Aid Efforts the United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres has expressed deep concern over the rapidly deteriorating security situation in Haiti. He has called for urgent action to address the crisis and restore law and order in the country. Guterres emphasizes the need for financial support for a multinational security support mission, which has been authorized by the Security Council. The mission aims to provide assistance to the crisis-wracked nation, which is currently the poorest in the Western Hemisphere. Kenya and Haiti recently signed a deal that would see a contingent of 1,000 Kenyan officers lead the support mission. However, the implementation of this mission faces uncertainties due to constitutional challenges in Kenya's high court. Benin has also confirmed its commitment to providing personnel to the mission. It is important to note that this support mission is not a UN peacekeeping force. Instead, it is a force specifically designed to address the pressing security requirements of the Haitian people and prevent the country from plunging into further chaos. The UN Humanitarian Affairs Office, OCHA, has reported that the fresh violence and upheaval in the capital have led to approximately 15,000 people fleeing their homes. Many of these individuals were already displaced due to previous conflicts and crises. Despite the security constraints, humanitarian partners on the ground have begun to respond to these new displacements by providing essential supplies and assistance. Food, hygiene and health kits, mattresses, blankets, sheets and lamps are being distributed to those in need. The World Food Programme, WFP, and other organizations have delivered over 5,500 hot meals to approximately 3,000 people living in three new displacement sites. The International Organization for Migration, IOM, has also started distributing emergency shelter materials to more than 300 families. However, the funding for humanitarian assistance remains a significant challenge. This year's $674 million humanitarian appeal for Haiti is only 2.5% funded, with a mere $17 million pledged so far. The lack of funding hampers the ability of humanitarian organizations to provide adequate support to the millions 
millions of Haitians in need. The Security Council has scheduled a private meeting to discuss the situation in Haiti, during which the head of the UN mission in the country, Maria Isabel Salvador, is expected to brief the council members. The UN chief, Antonio Guterres, is also calling for all political actors to swiftly agree to the necessary steps to advance the political process and restore democratic institutions through the holding of elections. The security situation in Haiti demands urgent action and international support. The violence, displacement, and dire need for humanitarian assistance require immediate attention. It is crucial for the international community to come together and provide the necessary resources and assistance to restore law and order, protect the Haitian people, and prevent further chaos in this troubled nation. Past interventions have often failed because they focused solely on elites or the state bureaucracy, neglecting the vital role of civil society and organizations working on the ground for the public good. To bring lasting peace and stability to Haiti, the international community must ally itself with the Haitian people and those committed to their welfare. One significant example of successful partnership in Haiti is the work of the church, which has deep connections with the people and communities. The church plays a crucial role in providing support, guidance, and assistance to those in need. Another example is the Albert Schweitzer Hospital in Deschapelles, which has been a beacon of hope and healing for the Haitian people. These organizations, along with others working tirelessly for the public welfare, must be actively involved in shaping interventions and solutions. Every conversation with Haitian colleagues, neighbors, and networks reveals a strong desire among the Haitian people to cooperate with the security program that can effectively stop the gangs and prioritize the safety of ordinary citizens. Haitians understand that establishing security depends on quality rather than quantity. It requires a smaller, high-quality security force that can communicate and cooperate effectively with the Haitian community and civil society institutions. This force must protect the population and work as a partner with the whole of society. Once the security emergency is stabilized, the focus must shift to a holistic strategy that improves the lives of the Haitian people. This strategy should provide job opportunities, education, and basic services to the population. It should be a long-term partnership similar to the successful PEPFAR program, which has saved millions of lives in Haiti and other countries by building global capacities against HIV AIDS. To ensure the success of these efforts, transparency is crucial. Decision-making processes and the flow of funds must be transparent to build trust and accountability. Additionally, assistance programs should aim to develop the capacities of local government and civil society to handle the challenges they face. By empowering local institutions and organizations, the international community can help Haiti stabilize and become a valuable partner in the region. It is important to note that the Haitian people themselves want to rebuild security first and then rebuild their futures in their beautiful homeland. They are eager to work hand in hand with the international community to bring about positive change. The success stories of partnerships in health and medical care, such as the Geskio Medical Centers and the PEPFAR program, demonstrate the potential for collaboration and progress in Haiti. Those who doubt the possibility of success in Haiti should recognize that success comes through partnerships with those Haitians who are committed to the welfare of the entire population. Haitians, like any other people, want to build their homes in their beautiful land. By aligning with the Haitian population and working together with local partners, the international community can help Haiti stabilize, rebuild, and become a valuable partner rather than a security danger for its neighbors. Enjoyed the video? Crave more excitement? Stay tuned by clicking on any of the cards on your screen right now for more thrilling content. See you next time.